Okay, let's go to 14. Number 14 is kind of on the brink here of the paper, of the page. Find the derivative of f of x equals 3x minus 5 using the definition of the derivative. So I, um, as I mentioned, so you can, you have a choice between the two formulas of 2.6 that we've already used in the other, in the other problem. It's either going to be the definition of the derivative that goes uh, limit of as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a, or you can use the format or the definition of the derivative as that goes limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a over h. Okay, either one is fine. Um, I always recommend, I, I always feel that if you have a choice, if they don't give you specific instructions on which one to use, I always feel that if you don't have a point, the one with the h is easier to do because it gives you a function. If you do have a point, the one with the a is only the a is uh, a and x is is the one that's easier to use because it gives you automatically a specific value if you plug in the x and y coordinates of the point that they give you for a and f of a. So in this case, we don't have a point, so let's use the one that goes f of a plus h. All right, so. In this case, then, it's going to be limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h. So what is f of a plus h? It's 3 a plus h, right? I just plug in 8 plus h for x minus 5 minus f of a. And that is, and don't forget that parentheses here, 3a minus 5. Okay, and that whole thing over h, there you go. And then, all right, oops, moving right along right. here. Now, what's going on with this? There. Okay, so that is then, let's do some, just collect like terms, resolve this here, maybe that's 3a plus 3h, 3a minus 3a is going to go away, so that gives you here 3h, and then minus 5 minus minus 5, that is going to go away as well. It's going to be 3h over h, and since I'm able to reduce h because I know that h is approaching 0, but it's not going to be 0, so we're not going to have 0 over 0 here, so I can reduce the h's, and so that means that derivative is going to be 3 because I reduce the h's here. And that gives me 3 because 3 is independent of the h going to going anywhere, so it's going to go to 3. All right, so now in this case I can just double check by the simple rule that I know, right? I already know that the derivative of 3x minus 5 is 3, so I can just double check and confirm that I've used the definition of the derivative by inserting this function here into the definition of the derivative and then doing the algebra that's needed to get to the solution. All right. Next, let's get rid of this one and let's move over here. Hang on a second. So I need to put that, let's see how to do this. I'll put that there and then scroll this up so you can see it. All right. Okay. So now this is a little bit tricky. And now we are actually getting into the problems that have been left unsolved or untackled even in a lot of cases, shockingly. Okay, so now what's going on here? Here are a couple more, right? These are for some uh, inexplicable reason. These are not printed. We're looking also for where f prime is increasing. And then, so f prime is increasing here, increasing. And then we're looking for f has local minimum. I can put this one as well. Okay, so okay, so let's see. This is f prime, right? This is not f. This is f prime. So what does f prime tell us? Let's just look at it without looking at the questions, and let's clarify some things here. F prime. It says it. This graph of f prime tells us that. The slope of f is positive between here and here, right? Because f prime is above the x-axis. So the slope of f is positive. So 
f is increasing between this point here, which is x1, and this point here, which is x3, really x3. Okay, so it's increasing here, and it's decreasing, or the slope is negative, it's decreasing between x0 and x1, and between x3 and x4. What else? The slope is zero, which means, well, there might be a minimum or a maximum at this point right here and at this point right here. There might be a minimum and a maximum at these two points here. Okay, how do we know which is which? Well, if it ch changes sign, it is either a minimum or a maximum. If it stays the same sign, if this would go, you know, up here from the negative, touching zero and then going going right back down, then we would have negative to zero to negative, doesn't change sign, it's not a local minimum or local maximum, but this one does change sign. Now, if it goes down first and then after reaching zero, it goes back up, I have what? A local minimum. And if it goes up first and then down, I have a local maximum, right? So this here is a maximum maximum because it goes from positive to negative and this here is a local minimum because it goes from negative to positive so I have a local minimum here okay now one other thing that we can learn is well of course you know the slope of f prime is positive here right from here to this point right here and then it's negative from here to here, right? And it's zero right here. So that tells us some 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 things about f prime, f two prime, and also by way of that, it tells us something about um, inflection points and concavity of f. Okay, namely, if f two prime is zero, which is the case right here at this point, right? The slope of f prime which is the value of f2 prime is zero right here at this point. So that means there must be an inflection point on f, on the main function. And on this part here, uh, the slope of f prime is positive. That means f2 prime is positive. That means f is concave up. And then here, the converse is true. Um, the slope of f prime, which is the value of f2 prime is negative in this area from uh, x2 to x4. So that means in this uh, interval here, f must be concave down. It has this shape right here, right? Which kind of fits in with our observation that there must be a maximum here, not a, not a minimum. Okay, so now that we know all this information, we've gathered all the information, let's see what they're wanting to what they're wanting us to, to answer here. So f is increasing. f is increasing, that means what we had, we said, if f prime is positive, that means f is increasing. So this one here, number one, would be the interval. And, and you know, just get used to writing this stuff in interval notation. Don't just write it out. So it's x, not x0, sorry. Not x0, it's x1, comma. This is a one, this is a comma, right? Very different signs. Uh, so x, one, this is this point right here, two, x3, no, I'm sorry, yes, two x3, right, whenever f prime is in the positive above the x-axis, that means f is increasing. So this is x3, all right? So that's the answer for this one, number one. F, f is decreasing, that would have to be the interval from x0 to x1, and uh, conjoined, that would be this sign, uh, I don't mean to put it there, but um, I don't want to really write this all out. So this right here would be, let me write one more, write out one more. This here would be x0 to x1 and also x3 to x4, right? Okay, this here, this whole thing here is the answer for Roman numeral 2. And 3, f prime is greater than 0, f prime is greater than 0 from x0 to x2. That's what we've had observed, right? It's f prime is increasing, that means f2 prime is, the second prime is, is greater than 0. And then f second prime is less than 0, that is from x2 to x4. f has an inflection point, we answered that, that's right here, it's at x2, that's the answer for that. F prime is increasing. F prime is increasing. Well, the slope of F prime, which is the graph that we're looking at, is going up, is positive from here 
to here, so that's x0 to x2. That's the answer for Roman numeral 6. Number 7, f prime is decreasing, is the other side of this, so it's x2 to x4. f has a local maximum, we found that to be right over here at x3, and f has a local minimum, we found that over here at x1. And that completes the answers for 15. Show that the curve y equals x phi, x to the 5 plus 2x3 plus 4x has no tangent line with slope 3. Well, what do we need to do there? Well, first of all, we need to... We have 16. First of all, we need to find the prime and then show that the prime can never be equal to 3. Okay, so what is the prime? Let's just use the, the power rule multiple times, right? So it's 5, the prime here, f prime of x equals 5 x4, x to the 4, plus 2 times 3, that's 6, x squared, plus 4. Okay, so this is my f prime, this is the slope of all tan, this, the function for the slopes of all tangent lines to this uh, polynomial function here. So I have to show that it's impossible for all of this to ever equal 3. Now let's just see you know, what that is. Let's just factor out what can we factor out here. Well, let's see. If this is 3, 5x to the 4 plus 6x squared plus 4. If that could be 3, then let's see what happens. Then that means your minus 4, right, is negative 1 equals 5x to the 4 plus 6x squared. Now I can factor out an x squared over here. That gives me negative 1 equals, um, let's see, x squared times 5x squared plus 6. And... And here I can just deduct that this is not going to be, poss be possible, right? Because x squared is going to be positive or greater than 0. So this is greater than 0, greater or equal to 0. And this factor here, this here is going to be greater or equal to 0. That means this is going to be greater or equal to 6. And that means, you know, this whole thing, since this is a factor, this is going to be greater or equal to zero, and that means it can never get down to negative one. So it's impossible for the second derivative, or the first derivative of this function here, to ever equal three. And this is this is our proof.